Hey everyone, Dennis here from Ploy.io. In the previous video, I've shown you how easy it is to set up the Ploycore web hosting panel. And in this video, I will be showcase, showcasing you the web hosting panel. So as you can see, we are currently on our dashboard where we can see some handy information. Uh, we can see how much sites we own, how much servers we own and which package we are on. We can also see the recent logs uh that are triggered by actions uh, a customer or yourself are doing inside the panel so if i head over to sites i can see all the sites i own in my account and i can click one to manage it uh, as you can see we provide the website path the ftp host the user the password and the creation date now the ftp is di available directly for for the customer and it's isolated from other users of course so I have FileZilla here to demonstrate. Let me copy that to my clipboard. And if I were to request the FTP to password, it would ask me for my account password to verify I am the actual owner. In this case, it was test. So I'm going to copy that as well. Uh, yes. And there we go. You can now see I have access to the example.com domain where the user can just upload their files like they want their application or uh, if they have a custom WordPress installation they can just upload it like normal uh, they have the ability to install WordPress or Nextcloud or October CMS directly from the panel so if I were to start installation directly from here it would install WordPress for the customer they also have the ability to select uh, a checkbox to create a database right away. Let me see if this already, there we go. WordPress is now installed automatically. Uh, they can manage their own databases per site. Uh, they have cron jobs, redirects, uh, certificates, and the certificates are currently only let's encrypt. Uh, we are planning on adding custom certificates. Um, it also has a check that it has to match the server's IP address, which currently obvi obviously it doesn't. Uh, but the validation is present uh, to avoid support requests. Um, at the same time, the user has the ability to change the domain name and to update the PHP version and to delete the complete site. Now deleting is, is as easily as this, just press confirm and it's gone. The user also has the ability to own servers and the, uh, the servers will be listed here. So if you attach a server to a user, it would be listed here and the user can just manage sites just like they do in sites. Because if they create a site, they would get a drop down here to select the server to be created on and I will demonstrate you. So if I head over to my administration area, press services and check out the web service, which one I would like to attach to a user. I can just edit, enter the email address from the user that, want I, that I want to attach to the web server. And let's also do the other one. There we go. Now, if I were to create a site, I would get a drop down asking me which server I would like to provision the server on. And otherwise it would be just random. Now, as you can see inside services, I also have the ability to change the maximum sites on this server. Uh, this means that uh, if there are 30 sites provisioned on this web server, it would not go beyond that. So uh, currently, it would allow 30 sites and not more than that. If uh, all the servers are full and a user tries to create one, a validation message will be thrown to the user indicating that there's no room currently to create their site on. So you can anticipate on that. Um, if you were to install new PHP versions to your server, you can uh, synchronize it again safely without any problems. Uh, it would not overwrite or delete stuff. It would just update the values uh, present in your system. So new PHP version would be present as well. So let me demonstrate that. Currently, if I check site another, there's only PHP 
And if I were to go to that server, that's 199, install 7.2, and let's wait for that to finish. All right, so now 7.2 has been installed. So if I were to check out the site PHP version, you can see there's no 7.2 available yet. So if I were to go to administration, services, synchronize servers, and synchronize it again, and head over back to the site, you can see now 7.2 is available, and I can change it right away. You also have the ability to quickly search for sites by pressing the search icon or pressing the uh, forward slash. And if I were to search, you can see the site pops up and you can directly go to it. Besides that, we have a dark mode button where you can enable the dark mode for the complete panel. You also get uh, a profile. Also, your customers have their own profile where they can edit their credentials. Uh, they can edit their name, email and language. Uh, besides that, we, they can enter a new password or update their frame. So let's head over to the administration and guide you through the administration area. So as you can see currently, uh, this is the dashboard from the administration where you can view all the system of all the recent logs from the users that have uh, done actions. Uh, you can see how much how much service you have present in your system, how much sites, how much users. Uh, you also have a settings tab where you can set up uh, different settings for your company. You can specify a company name which represents this value and in the title. You can also set up a email address which would re represent the from email address in sent emails. You can enter support email addresses, comma separated, to uh, receive emails about new support tickets. Uh, you can also select the default package for new users that you create and I will demonstrate packages in a minute. Here you can enable the support platform to allow users to submit tickets to you. I've just enabled it and you can see you get a support platform and here I can go to support, I can create a ticket, I need help. There we go, it has been submitted. Now let's check the administration. You can see there's someone that needs help. All right. Uh, there's also a documentation platform where you can uh, write your own documentation articles for your customers to uh, uh, guide them. Uh, these can be tutorials or guides or anything you like. And you also have the ability to, al to allow customer registration, which uh, publicly op opens up the register page. So if I were to visit this, you can see a register button pops up and I have the ability to register right away. Uh, this is completely up to you. Uh, uh, it depends on the uh, web hosting company if they would like to allow open registrations or closed. Um, and you have the system tab. Um, in this overview, you can see the current version, the remote version and uh, a boolean telling you if it's out of date. Currently it's not showing a version because we have not released a version yet, so it's empty. If there was a new version available, you can click a button here below that would uh, update the system in the background. And below that we have a few information help links for you to find documentation on. Let's head over to the next step, which is users. Here you can find all the users present in your system and let's just create one randomly. Let's create my own credential. Now uh, I can choose a role for, a role for the user, uh, which is user of administrator. Uh, a, a user is just a generic customer which ha doesn't have access to an administration. They just have their own environment to work with. Besides that, you can attach a package to the user and I will demonstrate packages in the next step. For this example, I will use basic. You can set a language for the user. In this case, I am Dutch, so I would select NL. And I can select a blocked reason. And if I were to enter a uh, value in here, the user would not be able to log, log in. And if he is logged in, he will be logged out, 
redirected to the login page with the message you have written here. So if you have a user that is abusing your system, you can enter a blocked reason here and they would be required to get in touch with you. Uh, you can also edit users. It's the same view, straightforward. Besides that we have packages and packages is a way to uh, set limits for your users and also sell packages to your users actually. Uh, so currently uh, my account is not on a package, it says none, and that means that I am uh, basically limitless. So I can do as much sites as I want. So the setting here, select the default package, is very useful for each new user that's being created. So if I would say I would uh, like to have professional as a default package and I will create a new user, the default package is professional. So if I... Um, Go over to the package view. Uh, these packages are automatically created during installation. You can select no, then you have the ability to uh, create your own packages, which you still can. You can create as many as you want. Let's create an Alson package. And if you say zero in this field, the user has uh, unlimited sites they can create on their account. And you can also allow server creation, for example. So now I have an awesome package. And if I were to head over to my own user, awesome package, save. And now you can see I am in the, on, on the awesome package. Uh, you can also edit packages. You can see how many users are on a package. And in the edit view, you also have the ability to delete them right away. Besides that, you have the plot, uh, support platform where you can reply to your users if you if you like to. Um, you can reply to your users. Uh, if they would reply back, they would reappear in this list. Um, and you can also close the tickets if you like. Besides that, there's services, which displays all the active web servers in your system and the active sites that are created through Bloycore. Uh, below that you have synchronized service, which is uh, a view to synchronize the service from Ploy to this panel. So if you have a new web server, you can synchronize it to your system via this view. You have to be an administrator to do this. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.